Hey, this is Ryan. And I'm Mike. We're the hosts of Action Nerds Go. Check us out on iTunes or at ActionNerdsGo.com. Thanks. You're listening to Gamer's Table. Hello and welcome to Gamer's Table, a podcast discussion of tabletop role-playing games, war games, movies, books, and various other game-related topics. Be warned, this show contains some explicit material that may not be suitable for all audiences. Hello and welcome to Gamer's Table. My name is Eric. This is Mike. This is Dan. This is Belky Bartokovus. What? <laughs> this is Jason. And I'm Sean. He was working all week to think of some really obscure name that he was No, I just thought of it last night, actually. I just believe. What, what was it? What did you say? Belky Bartokovus. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, he was a perfect stranger. Hey, Belky. Mark, don't wow. be ridiculous. <laughs> don't feed. Don't feed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, this episode, we're going to talk about some games. Modern day technology has advanced past some of the quote unquote sci fi or near future games that we play. Case in point Shadowrun. If you look at first edition Shadowrun, the technology that was cutting edge back in 89, 90, and totally fantastic is passe or ridiculous now. Yeah. Right. Some Especially have if, been you at, leapfrogged. if you look at the old art, it's funny, you know, they've, they've all got wires and cables and ra- what do they call it when a cord's a twisty? A spiral a coil, cord? A coil. Bungee cord? Yeah. Like and, old I mean, phone cord? They, I mean, they got this stuff jacked into their head, then they got jacked <laughs> into their deck, and everything's wireless now. I don't even remember them talking about wireless stuff. That's the trouble you have when you try and come up with something that's, you know, near future. Near future in science fiction has to be close enough to modern day to make it believable, but you take an awful risk of dating yourself and making your subject or your details obsolete. Incidentally, that's why you don't see cell phones in movies anymore. Because cell phones date movies it's true. very accurately. Right, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Think about the Zach Morris phone. Exactly. Zach, well, Zach Zach Morris Morris you can totally yeah. tell that's an early 90s show. Yeah. If um, not the clothes, definitely the phone. Yeah. Right. Yes. We just talked about Saved by the Bell, and I blame Jason. Awesome. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, junior this, high again. You know, we listen to, uh, Mark and I listen to a lot of uh, audiobooks. And yes. uh, one of the audiobooks that we've listened to together is Neuromancer. Yes. And at the very beginning of that audiobook, there's actually actually a foreword by William Gibson about the future. One of the last things he says is he has to explain to young people reading Neuromancer the fir- for the first time, where's all the cell phones? Because <laughs> he wrote it in 1984. There were no cell phones. Right. And the very beginning of the foreword, he talks about, in the beginning of Neuromancer, he talks about the sky above Chiba City looks like a television after the programming has stopped. And young people nowadays, that you, reference is you get, lost. You get a blue yeah. screen. So that I mean that reference right there dates it. Um, well, to keep rolling with with phones, that's one of the more interesting things I think with Shadowrun and, and science fiction in general is how far phones have come. Your iPhone there is more powerful than a computer was like five years ago. It's funny I was I was uh, talking to my ten year old daughter about technology and things like that in preparation for this episode, and something that she and I have found is that we enjoy watching the original series Star Trek together. She likes it because it's so campy and weird. And uh, of course, I like it because it's nostalgic for me. The way technology is in that show, think about it, cell phone, iPad, you've got all of that right there. Right. But then you've got real to real recordings in the background, <laughs> and you know there was one the one of the most famous original series episodes is the Trouble with Tribbles, and there's a part where he pulls the panel off, and you see the circuitry behind the panel, and it is ridiculously simple. And it's got like nine wires. Yes, it's got like oh, yeah. nine wires and, and a it. coil and a tube. Well, that's how advanced it is. Right, so, that's so advanced, they're doing more backwards. with less. Right, right, right. right. Wow. exactly. <laughs> well, one other interesting thing about that is when they re-released the original series in HD, they went through and changed all the analog clocks yes. to digital clocks. Uh, yes. Which I really? thought, yeah, I, they I did a the... lot, they did a lot of tweaks like that. Like they changed a lot of like the background matte paintings that were, that were really bad. Well, I know they changed a lot they, of the planets. Cleaned, yeah. They cleaned them up. Uh, all yeah. the, all the exteriors of the ship are definitely CG. But yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about things like that. You know, it's, you but, look back at old movies that were, you know, cutting edge or ahead of their time. The far future of 2001 and there's flying cars and yes, stuff like you know, that. Yeah, or there's a space station. You know, 2001 starts off with a space station. Or everybody gets a jetpack. 
You're starting to depress me now. I'm still working on my jetpack. <laughs> yeah. well, and the funny thing is, and, and you talk to somebody who is baby boomer generation, a lot of them thought that there would be a colony on the moon by now, and there would be space stations. Yeah, there's a space station. Yeah, the International Space Station. But yeah, is it really? That's not, that's what not we're, the 2001 space station. No, no not even close. <laughs> yeah. Where are my killer AIs? That's yeah, what I want to do. <laughs> and and also nor is Pan Am making regular flights into outer space. But, but know, Virgin Galactic, I think, is next year is supposed because to... Richard Branson is insane. He's nuts. <laughs> I love that guy. I, I love him. I love him exactly. Next year they're supposed to start ferrying people. Yeah, it's into like space. Uh, it's like one point two million something like that. Virgin Virgin Galactic. As fast as things were advancing during the space race, things have slowed down in that area. I think that. Uh, <laughs> Space technology, I think, will advance when we have somebody to compete against. That and was the whole thing right about now. The space there's race. right now. There's no reason to do it. Space I, technology will advance when it's privatized. Yes, I think that's, so. That's why. Look yeah, at all the yeah, advances that's reason in private I like technology. I just want to touch on Star Trek again, real quick. The first flip phone, the StarTac. I had one. That's sad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't have it recently. I had it when it was out. It worked like the Star Trek communicator. It flipped up. Did it make a noise when it did? No. We, they, we didn't quite have that technology, though. But uh, there was an interview with the guy who had designed the Star Trek phone, and uh, they said something to the face like, you know, how brilliant was Gene Roddenberry to where he predicted the use of, you know, a phone that would open up like this. And the guy said, I designed the phone after the thing from Star Trek. Right. Star Trek <laughs> was a very profound show. It, Until well, Voyager happened. It influences it the kind of people who make these changes. Oh, yeah. Right. If Mark was a super scientist, he would be working on a lightsaber. Yeah, you're damn you right know, I would. Because he was influenced by Star Wars. <laughs> right. Unfortunately, that'll never happen. Well, it's the power source. Really, that's the problem. Well, And, and getting the laser to stop three feet uh, from you, the you, you don't really make it out of a laser. You use plasma. That's, that's right. Kind of thing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> anyway. What we, what, plasma contained in a magnetic Most wheel. of the kinks are worked out is what he's saying. <laughs> he, he just needs uh, that one power source and he's gold. Yeah, 1.21 1. 1. 1 gigawatts? Yes. The, if you could get 1.21 gigawatts in a, in a 9-volt battery, I'd be all set. <laughs> there are some things that we don't have. Computer technology has advanced really fast. Medical technology has advanced really fast, but not to the point where we have cybernetics. But no. we're getting closer. Of, because We've got some cybernetics. We've seen like cochlear cybernetic. implants. Yeah. Uh, right, right. It, it, and it's, I want I cyber think, eyes. They yeah, are. And see, that's the thing. You cross that line, that ethical line, man or machine. They've wow. already putting in live wires in guys' heads now. Am that's I going to be the, cool. the only one to bring up who here wouldn't want a Mr. Stud? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. I think it went without saying. Yeah, was, I don't need one. Dan, give him something. No. But they've got like Blasted. um. There's a what year was that? 2005. They came out with this guy. He couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't do nothing. Well, they put live wires in his head and he could play pong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's uh, live wires, so he can control computers with yep. his mind. Is bone I mean, leasing possible? You think to the scale of Shadowrun, Titanic, Shadowrun. Wolverine? No. You, you need <laughs> you, the rest of your body needs access to your bones, so that your blood is produced in the, in the bone marrow and filters so out. So Wolverine should be dead. Well, oh, totally dead. Well, his regeneration fixes it. So right. yeah. Maybe <laughs> dermal plating. Uh, we can very, get some that's, dermal plating. That's a plating. very good tangent. Wolverine's red blood cells regenerate. <laughs> they would have to. So he doesn't need bone marrow. Well, his generation should get better when Magneto rips out right. his adamantium. Layers upon layers, this guy. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay, one of my favorite things about Shadowrun is the cars. And how now, if you look at concept cars now and even some production cars, we have kind of leapfrogged from a, from a design standpoint those old di design concept of what is futuristic. Right. You know, we, yeah. we, we are doing and that. Some of if my not, favorite like old cartoons when they used to have the, the, you know, the car of the future. And yeah. then you like, had the little pop. In the back for the mother-in-law. That was my favorite cartoon. I love that one. I love that. One. Wasn't that wasn't that the Simpson Homer the Homer mobile oh, had the, the separate the, area for the, the kids? Yeah. Yes. And the uh, triple sized cup holder. Yes. <laughs> first big QT cup. I think short of actually plugging into your car with into your head, we're, uh, we've the we're, options we're, on cars. Yeah, we almost have Johnny face. Cab. I mean, Google is working on it. I think um, when it comes to futuristic cars, you know, hover cars, uh, things like that, I think that. That won't happen as long as we have this dependence. Gravity? On, well, no, this dependence on fossil fuels. Oh, there's well, a way so, to, oh, yeah. you know. Right. We're we getting there. Well, you, yeah, I, I don't think that's you too can't, far off. You can't let, you know, Bubba down the street work on his flying car. No. You know, you just can't because <laughs> right. it's going to cause a lot of problems. Well, it's, it, but, you know, talking about, you know, hover cars, flying cars, things like that, something that, like you said, you can't have Bubba working on his flying car. You can't have Bubba 
driving right. those flying cars. You, yeah, you got to have the well, uh, the Google self driving machines before right. this. Uh, well, we're pretty much already Global. there. Yeah, it's funny as you meant you mentioned that Johnny yeah. Cab and Google Google Car or whatever it's going to be called. People always say, "Well, I want to be in control of my car," but really, why? You yeah, know, with, if you if with you, all the people texting and doing God knows what else driving, the, the truth of the matter parking. is, a modern car. You buy a modern car right now, you're not connected to the wheels. You are not connected to the fuel source. You are connected to a computer that's therefore then controlling those systems. Right. But people don't like to think that way. In Shadowrun there is the the, the, the grid. grid. And most of the cars in Shadowrun are like, auto-ran. You tell them where to go and that's where they go. That would be so much more efficient oh, than yeah. you know anything and else. You could create to. thousands of jobs well, by it's just, producing it. It's one of those huge changes Mr. that Obama. takes many generations to get these, these old these old mindsets, you know, out of well, yeah, out of our common have, conscious. You still have people who whose uh, concept of the open road, the the Kerouacian, I want to go out on you know on the road, easy rider, and all this other stuff. Mm. That's what motorcycles that's are for, right. right? That's right. Stay on your Harley, people. So I, that's another thing that I, f- I always found interesting about Shadowrun is, and I think it had so- has something to do with where that's set. Because right, the you know, Seattle the mindset, Seattle mindset of, of environmentalism and hippies. No, no, I was going to say being uh, ecologically responsible. You know, that's that's something that is pretty built in over there. You know, if where, you lived on Puget Sound, you'd be that way too. It's beautiful up there. I know that in the last ten years. I mean, I think we started to touch on uh, medicine earlier. In the last ten years, uh, I think, but yeah. Un- unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, one of the byproducts of war is that usually medical advancements grow exponentially I th- I, I, during well, wartime. I think that's an old-fashioned yeah. moniker, too, because th- they also used to say that was great for the economy. No, but you don't think it's true that in the last 10 years we've made huge strides in medical advancements? For, right. Okay. It, it, what I'm saying is there are more veterans coming home that normally would have died from wounds on the battlefield, and instead they're living, and they're also yeah. they're also losing extremities. Sure. And as and a, able to live right, uh, you know, right. like a regular life. As a result of losing those extremities, you still have guys that have lost a leg or lost an arm that can still run, that sure. can still jump, that can still hold things in their hands, hold their children in their arms. Right. I mean, that's stuff that we wouldn't have seen, at least not to the level that's at now, where we right. 15 years ago. Where we haven't made the leap to cyberpunk yet. No, we haven't gotten that far. That, that's that's what I was going to point out. Right. 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 And, and I don't think we've gotten to the point yet where we can grow cultured bioware. We haven't gotten to the point. I don't know. They, they, they grow to. ears on the backs of mice right, and yeah, stuff. They, they can do that. And, and I think, I mean, I just think we're just a, I mean, we're maybe a decade away from being able to do some incredible things medically and i think in our lifetimes we're going to see some by the time we're old men if we make it to be old men we're going to see some incredible stuff hey if ray kurzweil's right well we're going to live forever has cyberpunk dealt with cloning i don't think so i thought there was some a little bit of that involved in cultured bioware that if you were going to have a uh, say like an adrenal pump grown specifically yeah, for you. You grow a donor body, right? Yeah. But it's it's using your the, DNA. I don't think I don't think Shadowrun's gone into that. There's plenty of instances of other like the you know, island, the mm, island, yeah. yeah, movies and things like that that could be considered. You know, Lincoln Six Echo. Wow, I oh like dear, it was a good movie. Okay, well, can I'd like to usher in uh, part B to this? Was like you know what are the things that we've leapfrogged from like say first edition Shadowrun? What, what's in the current edition that uh, you know we're gonna see in the next ten and years? Surpass. And surpass. I mean, because there are a lot of really interesting things. Drones. Drugs. I totally – that <laughs> – dr- no, drones and drugs, two separate, but right, yeah. probably. Um, the, the drone thing is happening right uh, now. Well, yeah, they're, they're using combat drones in, oh, yeah. in right. Afghanistan. Oh, and, yeah. You know, combat drones, recon drones. And that's just the EOD stuff we know drones. about. And, and as technology <clears throat> advances, those things get smaller you know, that, and more efficient. They have bugs now. Insect-sized drones. Yeah, little nanobugs. They can, yeah, they can control, fly it right into your apartment. Wow. You'd never know it was there. And then Tiny Lister smashes it with a shoe. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sean brought up nano. I think nanotechnology yeah. is yeah. one of the, yeah, it is. It's in its infancy right now. Yeah, yeah. I, talk, I talk about my, my daughter. She's uh, she's 10, and she wants to be a robotics engineer. That's her goal, to be a robotics engineer. I say, you need to get into nanotechnology. Yes. So, and she, of course, goes, uh, no. Yeah, it's it's funny that, that pretty awesome because I'm I'm telling her you know if things are getting smaller. There's going to be the point where people are going to inject robots into your body to repair things. That's the way things go. Things <laughs> you get to a line where it's like oh people are playing God and then you cross it and then there's another line. You know people would you know back what twenty. 
30 years ago thought, you know, you, there's no way you could talk to your phone and make your phone do things. I, I should talk my, to my truck. I can talk to my phone, but it don't do <laughs> shit. Have, has anybody here given their grandfather a uh, an iPad to look at? It, it blows their mind. It will blow their mind. Yeah. yeah. I, I did show my grandfather who just passed away a few months ago. Last spring, we took Sean and I took him to the doctor, and I was showing him my phone, and I was 